So hello, welcome to part three of our three-part introduction to pursuing a graduate degree in visual studies here with us at the Visual Studies Program, Faculty of Creative Arts, the University of Malaya. Uh, my name is Simon Soon, and I am a senior lecturer here in the Visual Studies Program. So in this video, we will be focusing on our PhD program here in visual studies. So what is a PhD? Essentially, it is an academic degree uh, it is the highest academic level awarded following a course of study by universities uh, to a student uh, undertaking research work. Uh, but it's not any type of research work that you are awarded with a PhD. It is awarded to a candidate who have submitted a thesis or dissertation based on extensive and original research in their chosen field of study. Okay. So normally a PhD takes uh, um, uh, up to six years. So it can be as short as two years, though this is really unlikely, uh, all the way to six years. And we count this, if we count this by semester, it's a minimum of four semesters to a maximum of 12 semesters. Uh, uh, throughout this journey of yours, you are only required to take one core course. And this is the methodology class at the beginning, or uh, normally in the first year of your uh, PhD uh, candidature. Uh, over the course of your candidature, you are required to complete an 80,000 to 100,000 word thesis, as well as publish in two academic journals. Okay, uh, so um, to prepare for your application, we would normally like to see what your research is about, to get a sense of what your research is about. And as, uh, as such, you're required to prepare a PhD research proposal and attach it alongside with your application. So a PhD research proposal is expected to be around two to three pages in length. Uh, it should be written in a clear and concise manner uh, you shouldn't have any typos or grammatical mistakes. Uh, also, try not to impress by using big words. Um, it's better to be accessible. Uh, try not to be too personal, though. Uh, and you should uh, come across as someone who is communicating your ideas in a professional way. And more importantly, be confident, but not overly pompous. So what a research proposal is not is that you shouldn't simply just state or announce what is the research topic that you're interested in pursuing. That is not what we're looking in a, for in a research proposal. Anyone can say that they want to study a particular topic, but that is not enough to convince uh, your potential supervisor why you have done the necessary uh, preliminary thinking uh, to qualify you uh, for a PhD uh, candidatureship. So what you need to do is to demonstrate that you have done extensive preliminary research, identify a problem or issue that you want to address through your research and have a good idea where and what the sources you will be you will need for your research and how to access those sources. So uh, as a general rule, it's always uh, good manners and uh, important for you to first contact your potential supervisor before you put their names down in the application form so that they can advise you on whether they are the most suitable potential supervisor for your PhD candidatureship. Okay. Uh, in your PhD proposal, what needs to go in there is that first you need to clearly indicate what your uh, project title is. And after that, uh, give us a bit of an introduction, uh, set the tone, identify immediately and directly what your research topic is. Don't uh, give us a background information before you finally get to what you're trying to explore. State very clearly what your research topic is, and then you can describe to us your proposed mode of research. Uh, what you can do here is to draw links between your research 
and also uh, the school that you're applying to. Explain to us why you've chosen your supervisor and what research have they done or that reinforce and support your work. What do you think that they have done that can help you to clarify issues or uh, uh, that you want to explore through your research project? And this is where it becomes important because it's important in your PhD proposal to also state what is the problem statement. What is the main issue you want to address? It is not just the topic itself. You need to recognize an issue, identify what is problematic about the issue. Is it about a gap in knowledge that you want to fulfill? Is it about trying to apply a different theoretical lens to study something that is commonly studied, but that you believe through this theoretical lens that you are able to uh, discover new insights about the topic? You, what is the issue uh, at stake is something that you need to state clearly. How is your research addressing this issue? And as a result of this, what is the hypothesis that you are anticipating uh, that you would need? Uh, what is the argument that you want to make uh, by identifying this problem statement? All of this should help you to better clarify what the objectives of your research is. And this should be a breakdown into point form, maybe up to three points, explaining the, what the issue is about and the steps of achieving this research outcomes. Uh, and in many ways, after you have formulated your objectives, you can move on to state your research question, uh, which is really a way to reframe those objectives into question to help you direct your research inquiry, okay? Uh, following from that, you should also include the proposed approach and methods uh, for your research. Give us an overview of the approach and methods you will be using to conduct your research. Uh, so uh, approach here uh, refers to the perspective that you will be adopting or the theory that you will be using. And methods is really about how, the how you're going to obtain those data and information and where those resources and data are located. Please provide details of the sources that you will be using to carry out your research. It is not enough to say that they exist in some archive. State clearly where they're located, what exactly you're looking for, and what kind of challenges that you anticipate you might be facing and how you're going to overcome those challenges. So use this to discuss your proposed approach and methods rather than simply state it out in a method factly. Okay, so consider also perhaps equipment, few work expenses, travel, and, all, and maybe even a proposed budget. Uh, all these things can be considered and written down uh, in the proposed approach and method section. Finally, you need to undertake preliminary literature review, demonstrate an understanding of the current research climate in your area of interest. How is the current research lacking or falling short? Identify what are the gaps and how this moves you to approach your topic in the way that you have suggested uh, in your PhD proposal. So finally, uh, to round it all up, you are also um, you can also include an expected research contribution and this is where you argue for the significance of your research why is your research question or argument worth asking what impact will your research have on the discipline itself show how your research is innovative and original because ultimately you are evaluated for your original contribution to knowledge uh, at a PhD level. Uh, to wrap up the entire proposal, please include also the bibliography providing a list of references that you have created throughout your research proposal and attach a work plan schedule. 
And this is a timeline that shows that you understand the scale of the project and its achievability show as what you, how you can plan your time ahead, especially a project that requires you to invest three to four years of your time uh, on undertaking this research. Okay. So uh, very often you are required to provide also a letter of recommendation. Uh, to do so, you need to build a relationship with the potential letter writers. They need to know you. Uh, so ask them in advance, at least uh, ahead of time, uh, preferably two months in advance, and also ask if they feel comfortable writing a strong letter of recommendation for you. What you need to provide them are your CVs, your transcripts, and personal statements so that they can craft a much more personalized letter of recommendation. And personalized letter of recommendation makes for a stronger case uh, when your application is being considered. Uh, as uh, uh, and another important thing to remember is that you should also send a gentle reminder via email a few days before the due date for these letter of recommendation to your uh, letter writers uh, in case that they are not, uh, you know, they forgot uh, that this is on, that the deadline is on the horizon. Uh, and when you do so, it always pays to be uh, courteous. Uh, and uh, nice uh, rather than rude and demanding, okay? Uh, so uh, if you are, uh, once your application is submitted, uh, chances are you will be invited for an interview. When you come for an interview, please be prepared. Read up on the research of the key faculty members here in the visual studies program. And there's really, there are only four of us around. So it's not very difficult to find out what each and every one of us are, are interested in and have research strengths in. So also perhaps what is helpful is for you to think of some research related question uh, to engage with us. Uh, we like students who uh, open to having a conversation with us rather than uh, 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 rather than answer in a very routine manner. So when you ask question, when when you want to ask questions uh, during the interview, you could always ask us about the recent research developments that each and every one of us are uh, involved in. Uh, you can ask specifically about ideas for research, we can also uh, bring up the question of scholarly networks that you hope to cultivate. And you can, in addition, ask about additional training opportunities uh, uh, for students. Uh, uh, funding for conferences is also something that uh, you can ask, as well as opportunities and areas for professional growth, okay? Uh, but importantly, uh, when we do ask questions uh, and we do have that conversation during the interview process, there are do's and don'ts that you should observe. You should be enthusiastic, knowledgeable, factual, inquisitive, friendly, open, secure, mature, and excited about your research. Don't be ambivalent, tired, quiet, shy, childish, insecure overconfident, pompous, flirtatious, and cynical. And this is not, this is different from being skeptical, which is a very healthy attitude to have, okay? Uh, so uh, where to apply? Um, you can actually go to apply.um.edu.my, complete the application by filling in personal contact details. And also uh, there are other details that you need to fill in. And then you're required to upload a number of documents uh, uh, to support your application. Uh, again, uh, then to complete your application process, uh, you will be required to pay the processing fee amounting to 50 ringgit for Malaysian applicants and 300 ringgit for international applicants. And uh, the university accepts 
as FPX, uh, debit and credit card, as well as Flywire. So um, I hope that this has given you enough information about our PhD program. Feel free to write to me at signinsoon at um.edu.my should you require um, further information about our PhD course of study. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video. Um, hope that uh, to see you in our uh, faculty. Uh, good luck with the application.